Welcome back people! Today we will be doing a graphic card update uh, on the editing PC. Uh, at this point in the beginning I want to thank Asus for making this video possible. Thank you guys very much. Okay, so our editing PC is equipped with the RTX 2080 Super. Uh, this was released in uh, 2019 and it retailed in the beginning around 600 euros. This was pretty much one of the top of the line GPUs at that time. And I want to point out that at that time graphic cards were still reasonable priced if you check what you have to pay for 4080 which is the big big brother of this and uh, at currently it's about 1500 euros or something oh. like that. Nice! Yeah, so uh, my idea on the upgrade was that I will be upgrading to the similar price point, not the 4080 directly, which like I said is the big big brother of this. But and for the similar price range, uh, if I would have gone with the NVIDIA's cards, uh, 4070 is a little more expensive these days, than this and 4060 is a little bit cheaper and I've been dying to try other options lately so that's the reason why at this video we went for AMD's card. Uh, the 7800 XT is currently retailing around 600 euros, 6 to 700 so the price range is pretty much the same. And that's the reason why why we went for this. Uh, I haven't tested, I haven't used or played on AMD's graphic cards for a while, so I'm really interested of seeing what kind of a performance difference there will be. Uh, so on this video, first up, uh, well, <laughs> after this step. <laughs> <laughs> no, she. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Friday, I'm a little bit tired. Uh, uh, after unboxing, uh, I will show you how you replace the graphic card, uh, what you need to take in consideration there, and then some gaming and some benchmarking, followed by final comments. Hmm. That's it. So, as I said, let's start with the unboxing. The packing looks really nice. Okay. Let's start with the side-to-side -side comparison. These are, as, as size comes, pretty much the same, so this should fit in perfectly to my case. That was also one of the points. Of course, these are the pretty much the biggest cards that there are available these days, so it, it can grow much of this. <laughs> Uh, also, another good thing about these cards is that they use the same amount of power and they have the same connector for the power. So uh, it's kind of an easy upgrade, so it's kind of switch it in the, in the case because the, I can work with my current power unit, power supply, and I don't need any new cable, so easy peasy. Other things in the packet. Just this small thing. Oh. Here. Some manuals, some stickers, and you know, as you know, I don't really need them. Mm. I'm thinking that this is ah yeah, uh, vertical stand. Uh, well, vertical support. Because these days graphic cards are so heavy that uh, in some cases the, when they are connected to PCIe socket they need extra support on the back so that they don't hang and physically get damaged. Very important if you're moving your PC these days. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a standard. These come, these come in similar forms with every graphic card, bigger graphic card these days. It's very important to insert this correctly so it will uh, support the graphic card correctly. Mm. 
Besides that, it's just time to take off the stickers and do the swapping. First you need to remove the power cables from the graphic card and then remove the screw that holds it in its place. There is a small clip that you need to push that is besides the socket itself. Right here. Push and pull. And remember to take out the display cable. Simple as that. Both of the models use about the same amount of power, so I don't need a more powerful uh, power unit. And they have the same connectors for the power, it's just kind of a plug in as a process. You just need to push it to the same socket and remove the socket cover. Screws back on and the cables and we are done. Nearly forgot to install the support for the graphic card. Now we just need to install the AMD drivers when switching from NVIDIA to AMD. But after that, we are good to start gaming again. Let's play some Cyberpunk with the 2080 Super. Settings are now high and the ray tracing is on medium. The FPS is running between 50 to 30. Now let's test this without the tray tracing on high settings. Without tray tracing that's running quite a lot smoother, max 70 down to 50 frames per second. Now let's change the graphic cards and see what the difference will be. Let's see how well the 7800 XT performs in Cyberpunk. We will start with high settings. On high settings it's running around 160 to 180 frames per second, not bad. Now let's change it to tray tracing. Yes, it drops a lot, but it's still really playable even with the tray tracing on medium settings. Now let's give it a test with ultra tray tracing settings. It drops a lot, even down to 50 frames per second, but it's still playable. But smoother experience is to go with high settings instead of ultra. Alright, now let's do the benchmarking comparison between 2080 Super and uh, 7800 XT.
So, I've been now using the new car for a few weeks and I had ha haven't had any issues with it. The AMD software compared to the NVIDIA's is quite similar. You can find same settings there and the both softwares are very stable. Uh, the so per per overall performance increase from 2080 Super to 7800 XT is roughly 50 to 60 percent depending on the comparison. Uh, as the both cards have similar had similar retail prices when launched, I'm quite happy with this update. That's about it. Thanks for watching guys and I see you again.